Hello everyone, my name is Kitty and today I'm going to show you how to make a Regency dress inspired by the movie Emma. I will be using an old white bed sheet, some leftover lace and white thread, and I'll be sure to put a list of items down below for you. So just full disclaimer, I don't know how authentic my dress is going to be, but it should be really fun to make. And let's go! So the dress I was inspired to make is this beautiful white sheer dress that we see multiple times throughout the film. Emma wears it when she first meets Harriet. She wears it again when she has tea with Mrs. Augusta Elton. And we see it a third time when she visits Mr. Knightley's estate, Donwell Abbey. It is such a cute and versatile piece and I was really excited to make it myself. The materials you will want for this project will include a sewing machine, paper to create your pattern, pencil and markers, a ruler and measuring tape, thread, buttons, snaps or some sort of closure, safety pins, ribbon or some sort of string, decorative lace, and 2.5 meters of fabric. I am using an old bed sheet. To help you draft your own pattern, I have plotted out some points here for you. If you follow the length and width measurements and plot these points and connect them using curves, you should be able to create a pattern similar to mine. Of course, my pattern is designed to fit someone with a 36 inch bust and about a 30 inch under bust. You can cut with a little bit more room on center for the front bodice and change the gathers to fit um, a little bit more variation in bust sizes. As you can see, I'm just plotting out the points that I have listed and I am connecting them using curves. Um, you can also change the neckline. You can make it a little bit more deeper for more of a nighttime look or a little bit higher cut. Of course, I do recommend after drafting your pattern to make a mock-up. It's a good way to make sure that everything fits. Uh, now I'm moving on to the back pieces of my pattern. I am using the measurements following the X and Y axis and plotting out the points again. And once they've all been marked, I am using this purple marker to draw the shapes and of course draw the dart where I will be cutting out the fabric. Please uh, keep in mind that I am making this pattern without seam allowances. So it is good when you cut it to add seam allowance. I'm doing the same for the sleeve. The sleeve should definitely be a little bit taller in the back and then taper off towards the front of the sleeve with sort of these angled marks. Make sure that the sleeve matches. Once I finish drafting my pattern, I go ahead and cut the pieces out and label everything just in case I want to return to it later, I know what piece is what piece, and what is the front and back of the sleeve. Once they've cut it out, I am just gonna check all the measurements, make sure the sleeve matches and the side pieces match as well. I just wanna make sure that my pattern all lines up together and will be good to move on and cut my fabric with. As I mentioned, I really do recommend making a mock-up. As you can see here, I am just showing you my pattern pieces. Like I said, I did not create these patterns with seam allowance, so please add seam allowance when you are cutting out. And if you want to add more room to the bust, just cut a with a little bit more room on the center fold of the front bodice. And please make sure to leave room on the back for any buttons or button pockets that you may be wanting to create. Now I am just measuring from my under bust to where I want the skirt to hit, just figuring out the length of the skirt for my dress. The bed sheet has some already finished edges and I want to take advantage of that. So I am folding the sheet so that I can use the 250 centimeter width as the bottom of my skirt. That should save me a lot of time hemming up the bottom of the skirt. Now I have one big rectangle cut out. It should be as long from my underbust down to my ankles and about 250 centimeters wide. 
and using the leftover fabric, I will be cutting out my bodice and sleeve pieces. And again, I wanna take advantage of the finished edges on the bed sheet. So I am trying to arrange them very strategically. So I have cut the sleeve on the finished edge of the bed sheet. And now I will be cutting out the front and back of my bodice as well on the finished edge. Uh, that way I can create this faux button placket for the front of my dress and a real button placket for the back of my dress. Please keep in mind I am cutting with seam allowance since I did not include seam allowance on my pattern. Now that we have your pieces cut out, we can move on to sewing. I will be arranging the back piece with the side piece to create the side dart and sewing it with a straight stitch. Once I have sewed it, I will be trimming the edges very carefully and folding it over and sewing the other side with a straight stitch to create an enclosed seam. The reason we want an enclosed seam is because this fabric is a little bit sheer, so I want to hide the seam kind of within itself. When starting the enclosed seam, make sure to have the wrong sides touching. That way when you fold it over and sew again, you will have the enclosed seam on the inside of the garment. Now that you have put together the back of your bodice and completed the dart, you can adhere the front and back of your bodice together on the side seam using the enclosed seam method. And just repeat for the other side of your bodice. Steps to create an enclosed seam are very easy. Just give the edge a straight stitch trim it very close to the stitch, fold it over, and sew again with a straight stitch to enclose that raw edge and catch it inside the second seam. Once the side seams are finished, go ahead and sew the shoulders together, starting wrong sides touching. Once your shoulders are fixed together, we can move on and start with the sleeves. Sew the sides of your sleeves together to create a sort of tube. Go ahead and use the enclosed seam method here as well. To attach the sleeve to your dress, go ahead and match the side seam of your sleeve to the shoulder seam on your dress. Here you can see it in the diagram. The very back of the sleeve, that seam, match it to the shoulder seam on your bodice. Working your way from the shoulder seam around the armhole to the side seam where the back of the bodice and the front of the bodice are joined, pin these pieces flat together. Once you reach that side seam, measure about six inches up and mark it. That is where you will stop pinning these pieces flat together. Now the area that you pinned, go ahead and sew it together with a straight stitch. Now there should be a gap where the sleeve has not been joined to the armhole. And I'm gonna show you my method for creating gathers to make a puff sleeve. I like to use the small pair of scissors and sort of push the fabric up under the foot of the sewing machine and create these gathers as I sew. What's important here to remember is that the bodice fabric should be underneath and the sleeve fabric should be on top. That way you can push it into little gathers and sew it onto the fabric underneath, which would be the bodice fabric. Once you have that initial stitch down, joining the sleeve to the bodice, I like to go ahead and give it a trim and then a nice overlocking finishing stitch, making sure that it doesn't come unraveled as I wear it. Amazing. So your first sleeve is finished and attached to your bodice. So you can move on and start on your second sleeve. Go ahead and turn that sleeve into a tube using a self-enclosing seam, and then pin that back shoulder seam to the seam on your sleeve. Pin it, work around the two pieces flat against one another, that way there is no gathers. And then from your side seam, measure six inches up and pin those pieces together. Straight stitch them and then you can 
fold it and start working on the gathers. I think here you can see a little more clearly how I adjust the sleeve and inside it out to prepare to make the gathers. The bodice fabric sits underneath the sleeve fabric and I use these small scissors to sort of push little gathers and create them and sew them on top of the armhole. And now a quick gander at the gathers on the sleeves to make sure everything turned out. Then just a quick trim of the raw edges, preparing them to give them a nice zigzag stitch to finish them off and keep them from fraying. Now we can start on the neck hole. I like to just fold it over a little bit and give it a straight stitch down. After I've given that a once over, I fold it over again and straight stitch it one more time. The second time I give it a little bit more room so that a safety pin with ribbon or string can pass through and create that drawstring closure along the neckline. Because I wanted the front of my bodice to have a button placket, I did not cut the front of my bodice on the fold of my fabric. So I have two pieces. So of course I have to repeat these neck full steps for both sides of my bodice pieces. Time to add gathers to the under bust of the bodice. I want my gathers more in the front and center. So first I take the measurement of the bottom of the bodice and figure out how much fabric I need gathered to create the correct measurement of my under bust. Once I figure out how much I need gathered, I go ahead and put a pin to mark the place of where my gathers will end. Then I start placing my decorative lace. I find that it is much easier to add any trimmings before you add the gathers. I also went ahead and gave the bottom of my bodice a little trim just to make sure it was even. Using a straight stitch, I added the lace to the front of my bodice, making sure to sew it on either side of the lace. That way it didn't lift or roll up. Then I added the decorative lace to the other side of my bodice, keeping it even and matching it with the first side of my bodice just giving it a pin as I went. And once I was finished pinning it, checking the measurements, and then sewing both sides of the lace down with a straight stitch. As you can see, I have added the lace outside of where I marked my gathers. That way the decorative lace will lie more on the sides of my bust. To create the gathers on the front of your bodice, set your sewing machine to the straight stitch option with a large stitch length and then sew that front portion of your bodice with the straight stitch. Then take one of the threads and pull it tight and it will draw the fabric together and create the gathers for you. Once you have decided on a gather length that is appropriate for you, secure those gathers down by sewing that area one more time with your sewing machine this time either a straight stitch or zigzag stitch on a shorter stitch length. That will secure the gathers in place. And be sure to match both sides of your gathers together, making sure they are the same length. I also took a quick moment to affix the bottom of my bodice together. Returning back to the sleeves, I just folded over the edge of the sleeve and sewed it down to create a channel for the elastic. Then I figured out how long I wanted my piece of elastic to be by measuring the circumference around my upper arm. Then I cut two pieces of elastic that length. Next, I added a safety pin to the piece of elastic and secured the other side of the elastic to the outside of the channel and then I worked the piece of elastic through the channel that I had sewed down, and that's gonna create sort of the gathers around the bottom of the sleeve. Once you've finished, go ahead and take the two ends of your elastic and put them together flat on top of each other and sew them down repeatedly with a zigzag stitch to make sure they are absolutely secure. 
then you can go ahead and close that little opening you left for the elastic with a straight stitch. Now you have a gathered puff sleeve. Go ahead and repeat on the other side, folding the edge of the sleeve over to create an elastic channel, feeding the elastic through the channel with a safety pin, and then of course, sewing the two pieces of elastic together. If necessary, use a safety pin to hold those two pieces of elastics together when sewing. And again, be sure to sew them very securely together. Once you're finished, you can just adjust the elastic within the channel. Ta-da! You now have two cute puff sleeves. Now I'm adding the drawstring into my neckline. I measured how long my neckline was and then made sure to cut the ribbon a little bit longer than that. I put the ribbon on a safety pin and threaded it through the channel. Once I finished pulling it through, I tied a knot on either side of the ribbon and finished. Taking my large rectangle of fabric for the skirt of the dress, I sewed the sides together, matching the right sides. When I reached the end, I didn't sew the last five inches. I will be matching this part to the back of my bodice and adding closures so that way I can get in and out of the dress. Now that you have sewn your side seam on the skirt, go ahead and take the top edge and start pinning. You're going to want to mark the halfway point in the front with a pin and then the two quarter points on the sides with a pin. The halfway point should match with the center of your bodice and the two side points, the quarter points, are going to match with the very back to side seam of your bodice. So this is the halfway point on my skirt that I have marked with a pin and I am now matching it with the front center of my bodice and pinning these two pieces together, right sides touching. And match the quarter points on your skirt to the back dart on your bodice. Once you have pinned these points together, we will be sewing the bodice to the skirt. From the back dart seam around the front to the other back dart seam, we will be creating gathers using the small scissors again, sort of pushing the fabric under the machine and sewing the skirt of the dress with these created gathers. Once you have finished adding the gathers back seam to back seam, it is time to work on the pleats that will be on the back of the dress. I like to start where my back closure will go and fold the fabric and pin the pleats into place. Just in case I need to adjust the pleats, I can. Once I have my pleats pinned in place on one side, I go to the other side and start pinning those pleats in the opposite direction. Once you are satisfied with the placement of your pleats, go ahead and sew them down to the bottom of your bodice. I like to go ahead and sew them with a straight stitch and then remove the pins once I'm finished sewing and give it a check, make sure that there's nothing funky happening. After I'm satisfied and everything looks good, I trim the raw edge and finish it with an overlocking stitch, something like a zigzag stitch, just to make sure nothing comes unraveled or frayed from wearing it. And then just for a little something extra, just along the bottom of the bodice, I like to give it a top stitch that just holds sort of that little bit in place and I think gives it a nice finished quality. Now we can go ahead and add any finishing details like embellishments and closures. I just added a few buttons to the front of my dress more for decorative purposes than function sewed those down and then on the back of my dress I actually sewed uh, snap closures. Um, they can't be seen. I thought it gave it kind of a neat clean finish to the back of my dress and of course um, I will be tying the back of my dress closed with that drawstring closure that I added. Now the reveal.
If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe for more. Thanks!